Peace, 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 peace. Welcome back, man. It's part of my fresh radio. My name is A.O. Baker. Now, everybody in eye and ears reach knows the part of my fresh. It's my hat company. It's built on creativity, celebrating the creator, celebrating, you know, the, the people that come up with the really, really good ideas, the fresh ideas, shall we say. So part of my fresh radio is exactly that, except we go under the hat of some of those very people. We go under the hat of the people that's creating the dope things that help to, to keep the, the culture moving forward. So before we actually do this uh, this introduction, I want to let everybody know you can go over to partofmyfresh.com. It's a brand new, brand new thing thing dropping somewhere around like fall winter time. I outdid myself, if I may say so myself, but we're uh, newly launched on Amazon. So we got a, a handful of those those caps left. Make sure you pick one of those up because once they're gone, they're gone. Definitely stay tuned. But neither here nor there. This is part of my fresh radio. The guest that I have on, you might be familiar. I put this project out last year called No Flows Bar. Track number two It's called Outside. The guy that was my co-pilot on that record is the guy that I have on the line with me right now. And of course, if you're tapped into wrestling and you happen to be on Twitter, there's no way you don't know that man's work. But we're going to get into get into all of the above but before we go any further i want to bring, bring my man graham from the west side of things to part of my fresh radio what's up family i am muted i am there muted you, my man. you know it's crazy i thought i thought when i when i got bumped up from from backstage to on stage it would automatically flip but I, yeah, I, yeah. Other, other than that mishap I'm, I'm good money man how you feeling g everything's good on my side of town man how you doing I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Everything is uh, in alignment and right where it should be with me, to be honest with you. I, I can't complain about nothing. I hear that. I hear that. So like I mentioned, man, like rap artists, one, you know, let's before we even get into any, any, anything specific. Right. So when I was looking to put together that No Flows Bar project, which I'm going to play a little bit uh, of the record that we put together. Um, I was like, yo, I'm, this is strictly for the love. This is not necessarily what I do for a living. I just love rap. I'm really good at it, making the beats, really good at it. And right. I wanted to put a, to put together a project, people that are in this little intersection of pro wrestling and intersection uh, of pro wrestling and hip hop. So what came for you first? Did you actually get into hip hop first? Did you get into pro wrestling as a fan first? Like what's like number one in, in the origin story of Grant? I mean, the music thing was always there, but uh, the wrestling thing was always there, too, to be honest with you. As far as uh, if we're talking about uh, which came first, as far as which I was introduced to first. Absolutely. Like as a fan. Uh, then uh, then definitely we're talking about pro wrestling. Uh, my father uh, was a big wrestling fan and just him being a fan of you know people in nwa awa in the just like the 70s and the 80s and shit like he kind of you know brought me up to speed and all of that you know what i'm saying in my younger days and all of that and uh we used to go to a bunch of like wcw events at the cow palace and and, and all hey, of that okay. so yeah so it was definitely that before i had any like real uh cognizant you know idea of what was going on musically in, the, in that sense like you know once i got a little bit older you know it started recognizing like the things that my cousins were playing like local bay area music san quinn messy marv e40 mac dre like all of that that whole wave like rbl posse all of that was happening like when i was growing up so uh but definitely first and foremost it was it was definitely pro wrestling or now, like I mentioned, if you happen to be on Twitter and you're a wrestling fan, you know this man's work because this is one of the three members of the the, the Public Enemies podcast, which is killing. I saw you guys made the uh, the the podcast charts. I saw somebody post that the other day. So y'all are moving on the <laughs> podcast side of things on the audio. The Twitter is doing numbers. The shouts to Keek. She's she's definitely family as well. She's uh, tapped in with us a, a couple of times. Um, yes. But you know, being a a wrestling fan first and foremost, and then moving forward later on in life to actually do media as a wrestling podcaster. What's the origin story of, of the, the public enemies podcast and how did you even get in the podcast in the first place? All right. So, uh, I was doing music, uh, myself, uh, for a while and I kind of wasn't really feeling like I was getting any traction, but I, I still wanted to have like some type of creative outlet. Um, and I remember I was listening, to like just different podcasts at the time like combat jack um mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? all right peter that man of course pure love big action 
Uh, but um, around that time, I was also like listening to like old head, like old like old writers, old like Bruce Pritchard. I think right, also, right. like a. Uh, uh, there's, there's a couple other old heads that had like podcasts. Stone Cold had a podcast, which was actually pretty dope. Uh, but um, I had stumbled upon um, a podcast with these two middle aged white men. And that's pretty much what the culture was and the wave was at the time. Um, and they had done this ad drop. And the gentlemen that were hosting the podcast were not too far, like, from where I was, like, where I live. You feel me? So I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, these guys are just maybe, like, 30, 40 miles up the way, and they, like, really do this. Um, but they, they had an ad drop one day, and they were promoting Raycon earbuds. <laughs> Ain't that and Brandy's brother? Right, right, exactly, right. But <laughs> that that day when I was listening to that podcast, my my gears got to turning, and I was like, "Hold on, if if they're getting ad dollars from Ray J and what Ray J is doing right now, they don't know nothing about Ray J. They're exactly. promoting this to an audience of people that likely don't know nothing about Ray J or don't know that Raycon is Ray J's brand because right. they're not really promoting and pushing that aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, they're not talking to us. They're not talking to me as a wrestling fan. And uh, I don't know, that just kind of got my gears turning. I, I reached out to a, to a couple of, uh, to a couple of friends uh, that were like-minded. Um, we kind of got the ball rolling. Actually, to be honest with you, we kind of threw ideas around about like how to format, how to, how we would run it, how to work it um, and all of that for about almost a calendar year uh, before we got started. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much how Public Enemies got started. I I, I listened to a podcast of some white dudes pushing Ray J earbuds, <laughs> and I was upset about it. So there you go. Yo, the, the most fire full circle moment is that you gotta get Ray J on now. You know what I, I mean? I, man, if I could, I would. I'm trying. <laughs> one day, one day, we 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 gonna make it work. I promise you that. Yeah, definitely. And how many yeah. years has it been now, Public Enemies? This is six years in the making. Now. That's fire. Six that's years. Fire. In, yeah, six years in the win, and uh, it took us maybe it took us five and a half years to become profitable. Um, and so now I feel like it's, it's kind of like the, the clock started all over again in a, in a whole different way. Like it's, it's a completely different energy now. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a different, it's a different ball game for us now. Yeah. hundred percent, man. All right. So now circling back, back to more origin stories, because we talked about how pro wrestling was first as far as being a fan and getting into music as an artist. Who were you a fan of and who were you listening to? Obviously, you know, those names that you mentioned earlier were just around, but when you started to actually write yourself, who was it that actually started to influence your style? Or did you have any influences and in then or did it just come like, you know, from trial and error putting pen to paper? <sighs> Method man. Big influence. I love Method Man, bro. <laughs> Yo, dog. Before you even go any further, man, I remember this. I remember this story so vividly, man. I don't know exactly how young I was, but I'm going to the barbershop. Barbershop is a couple couple blocks this way, right? So I make a right. I'm going down to the barbershop, and curious little kid. It was this black Maxwell cassette, black with with gold writing on it. I pick it up. I throw it in my pocket. I go get my cut. I come back home, and release your Delph off of Method Man's first album, but the album version, not the radio version, was yeah. on that tape. There was a bunch of other, but that is literally all I remember. And I just remember playing that, hitting rewind, play it again, hit rewind, play it again, 100%. So I'm, I'm, that's fire that Method Man was like so, influential to you. So what I remember, like, so the, first, so the first rap album that I ever got that was like mine to have, mine, like, that I owned, not something that I borrowed or was listening to from one of my cousins or friends or whatever. The first album that I got was Mace Harlem World, right? But the first rapper that made me want to rap was Method Man. And I'm like, this guy is just another level of mm -hmm. just like, not only lyricism but style and just like everything it just it felt like he was like the ultimate rapper you know how like when there's like i think uh like for for wrestling fans 
uh, I, I remember when JBL was on commentary, he would say like Randy Orton would be like God's yep. gift to wrestling. If, if you were, if you were to put a wrestler together in a lab, you would come out with Randy Orton. I feel like if you were to put a rapper together in a lab with all of the best components, you, you, you'd probably get somebody like Method Man, to be honest with you. Yo, that is so fire. Like Meth, again, yeah, again, like re release your Delph being that record because he had like, so many we can nerd out for a second as far as like internal rhyme structures different things that he would do with his voice you know being a guy even going back to that first Wu album i got in the in the rap heavy because i used to ride around with my pops and only thing running in that azuzu jeep was 36 chambers 30. you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing running yes 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 all of that oh my god i remember when i when i first heard that i was i was in i was actually in houston and I was watching, uh, I, I don't know what station it was, but I remember, um, uh, I, I remember that video popped up when they was uh, all the fucking killer bees and these niggas yeah, yeah, sliding yeah. around on fucking motorcycles and all this shit. I'm like, this, this nigga, I'm like, what is this right here? I'm like, this is, this is something that is unheard of, unseen before. It's like, they're like rap superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's exactly Crazy. what it was exactly what it was um so we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about about music and all that but let's let's get into this this is uh this is outside from no flows bar we're cutting straight to graham's verse and all that because he got busy he got busy and this is not like lightweight bars like I'm a I'ma give you flowers in a minute, bro. But let's let's hit play on this shit. Uh drip daily while I'm making a splash. Money grows on trees, I'm breaking the bag, and it's about time. I pay dues plus tax, took L's, bounce back, still about mine. About mine. Uh hit the Montez if the counts fly. Uh, hit the Montez if the counts fly. Grand Metal League, you know I only spit that Medellin. I hit the scene and then I'm leaving with a wetter thing. Everything is everything. Keep it tall, I'm like the Andy Warhol. A little parking lot brawl and it's all moxie. Mixed with a little moxie. The bitch got a black heart, I shoot my little shots in. Hey yo, made the car, we'll start when it's go time. Catch a clothesline if you try that little nose dive. That's misdirection, I really step in, go get the rep. Since adolescence, insurrection, and Mitchell and Ness. I'm old school throwback, thought you knew that. The P3 logo on the photo, that was New Jack, huh? Everybody got a price, feel like I'm DBIC. Kinda sorta proudly, minus the money laundry. I gotta keep it high, me for extra cheese and broccoli. Scheming Ponzi, I gotta get the Mazi, yeah. Money outside, never outside. Uh, hit the Montez if the counts fly. Now, here's the, here's the, the interesting thing, at least that I find interesting about you, sir. That's not like, you're not a, I just started rapping yesterday guy. Right, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of other records that you were a part of on the AEW side of things, but outside of those two and this, there ain't really too much floating around these here internets with your name <laughs> stamped on it. So, is I find I find like, where's the rest of the music, man? Like, and and what was your 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 path in as as an artist? You know. Okay. So for 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 me, um, it's out there um it's just not on dsps uh because i pretty much had everything pulled off i'm not i'm not really looking to profit from from mm -hmm. from rap and i'm not uh in the space where that's my main focus as a creative uh so like for me i'm not gonna continue to pay to keep something up if that's not really what my focus is now if you you want to run a run a play and search up through like old audio Mac files and shit like that. You're more gotcha. than welcome to us all there. But um, it's, it's uh, for, for me, it's, I don't know, brother. It's, it's, it's there. It's there. Um, for what, what I did was uh, I, I started off in like a, like a, like a collective, a group called bars, like fresh out of high school, me and a, a couple of my friends, I kind of started a group. Uh, we were, uh, doing this uh mtv2 do circuit 
uh, competition where they were like looking for just different acts from all over the country. Uh, I believe if you're like, if you're into like rock and alternative music, that's where groups like, uh, the myriad or all time low, uh, came from. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe plain white tees, they might've been the year before us, mm -hmm. but, uh, hey but there, Delilah. Hey there, Wagwan Delilah, all that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we were a part of this competition where, uh, our music was selected uh, down to like the last 12 uh, finalists. And then uh, MTV2 was going to do this thing where they uh, went to the final six, um, uh, their, their hometown area, uh, reached out and kind of did like a, like a my block type thing or whatever, like the noisy uh, things and all of that. Right. Um, so they were going to do that. Um, but, in order to do that, they needed all members there and they had reached out to us because it was looking like we were going to be uh, a part of that final six uh, collective and those finalists. Uh, but two of our members had actually uh, just caught, a, caught a case and they had to sit down for a minute. So we basically got disqualified from the competition. So that kind of pushed me away from the music for a little bit. Um, and then I ended up a few years later, um, kind of getting together with a, a a friend of mine that was in the group. Uh, he was more so a producer at the time. He was making a lot of uh, a lot of beats for me, and we ended up uh, creating a project called the Hulkamaniac. This is before we knew that uh, Hogan was racist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, we all got them, dog. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so we ended up creating this uh, this project called the Hulkamaniac, and that kind of took me on a journey of uh, the opportunity to perform at uh, South by Southwest mm -hmm. uh, with, with Converse and Thrasher, um, skateboarding company and magazine uh, from out here in the Bay Area, um, and then also uh, opening act performances with like Bumby, Pusha T, uh, YG. I've, I've, I've been blessed with the, the, a multitude of opportunities, to be honest mm -hmm, with you. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, after a while of not being able to gain traction on my own myself, it's like, okay, well, I, I got bills. I got a kid now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's other things that I need and probably should be doing. So that kind of shifted my focus. 100%. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I relate to it. But, you know, just from from, you know, one person that really does respect the craft to another that clearly obviously respects the craft. Your mm -hmm. pen game is respected, you know, Thank definitely you. on this side that. of things, hey, man. man. Like, likewise, you're brother, likewise, I, I wouldn't have done the record with you if I didn't feel like, hey, like Word. we can, you know, what I'm saying we can we can stand toe to toe with this. And, you know, this this is a nice one for me to be a part of. I'd like to, you know, what I'm saying kind of get some off here. I, that's, I that's appreciate that. I, yeah. I, listen, brother, I appreciated the invite yeah yo that was that was fire man like the 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 record came out really really good i'm proud of it yeah. um shouts to my man real talk by the way that was a record of his that i scratched for that line um the money's outside oh, and i'm outside okay yeah okay. that's, that's a that's a good homie of mine real talk who i've been trying to figure out what to do with that line for years you know and it just came together really dope um but there's there's a couple of other projects that you've been involved in namely um you know with aew they have their who we are series um just had rich ladder on on the previous episode and on volume two time, man. yeah he did you know 11 out of the 13 or 14 records he did the beats for you know um and also got busy on that on the first project so like just let's go back to to volume one um you were part of that uh the will hobbs joint along yeah. with righteous reg on the powerhouse story all that um how did that opportunity come together for you man listen um that was crazy um i was i was not slated to be a part of that project i wasn't uh in the know of what was going on and you know that that this was something that they were working on and something that was coming um i got a message i believe on a a monday night might have been like a 11 something my time so i know it was late mm -hmm. uh where where he's at but i got i got a message from will washington and he was like hey um i got this joint that we're working on uh will did, will did the beef for that one right will yeah will washington did the beef yeah that. yeah um so he was like yo i got this joint that i've been working on i made this beat 
Um, Reg is on the record. Um, it's something that we're working on for AEW and Will Hobbs. And he was like, uh, I, I wanted, I, I wanted to see if you, you know, wanted to be a part of it. But uh, the catch and the caveat to that was this: this record has to be done and turned in by Friday. <laughs> and so That's I'm like, goes. yeah, okay, got you, good. I, I feel you. This, this is, this is interesting, right? So I, so I get the record, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, do I want to do this? I haven't really. You know what I'm saying? Like been stupid, like active, you know active, what I'm saying? Yeah. In, a, in, a, in, a, yeah. in a rap sense, you know what I'm saying? For some time here. So I'm like, okay. Um, all right, I'll give it a shot. But at the same time, I was like, if I got to have this done by Friday, I'm like, it's basically Tuesday now. Right. I got a job. I got a kid. Like I said, I'm like, I, I do got things to do. And I'm like, to be able to do this by Friday. And also I, I was doing the podcast. So I had a podcast to record, mix, promote, mm -hmm. cut up and all of that shit. So, um, I was just like, fuck it. Let's, let's, let's dive in head first and let's, let's go for it. Um, I was able to, I think I got him the record back. Maybe that, that Thursday evening, maybe that Thursday evening or Thursday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was fire, man. Reg did his thing on there. Um, the, just the, the idea of kind of telling Will's story and he's from where we're from and us being able to, to express that and kind of paint that picture for him, um, in a, in a, in a different way than what his original theme music was at the time and, and still is or whatever. Like he never really used it, but it, like for, um, for, for that to just kind of have a different view on Will Hobbs and right. where he's from and, you know, and what he's all about. Um, that was special, and I was uh, I was completely honored to to be a part of that. That that was a fire joint. I I, I thought that one was dope. Well, now was Will Hobbs somebody that you were already familiar with prior to AEW? Like if he's you know yeah. from the area and wrestling, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I I had uh, definitely seen like him on the indies and all of that. And once mm -hmm. I found out that he was like from the from the Bay, I was like, oh, okay, so he's from here. I've seen him, you know, what I'm saying at, at some of the events and stuff like that, but. I didn't know he was actually from here. You see a lot of people coming, they go or whatever. And I'm like, right. okay, he's from here. Um, and then um, I saw him, you know, get that opportunity with AEW. And then for us to kind of get that opportunity to do that song for him, I was like, okay, that's, that's fire. Like, that's I don't cool. know Will personally. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know Will personally, but um, just to be a part of that and to, to feel like I'm just a little piece of like what kind of like, I don't know what what people can take from his character and maybe kind of get a little bit more on uh the backside of maybe like what his hip-hop interests might sound like right. and, and things of that nature like that's cool to me yeah and it's like again it's all natural because like being from the same place there's just certain references and certain points of view that if you're not from here you're not necessarily uh, gonna yeah, get yeah you so might not you might the, not get yeah yeah so that's i thought that was that was really cool and then with volume two, so I, I would assume that this process was a little bit different seeing as how you were involved on, on you know, volume one, but this one was uh, Embassy Suites, the Bishop Khan story. How did this one come about? So Newly Bishop released, by the way. This has been out for maybe a month. Maybe a yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, man. All of that. Check this out, dog. It's already in your phones. All you got to do is go. type that in. AW All Elite Wrestling, Who We Are, volume one, volume two, do what you do. You know what I'm saying? It's right there for you. Uh, but yeah, uh, volume two, this was a record, uh, Embassy Suites. Uh, we were approached uh, about this maybe uh, at the tail end of last summer uh, about uh, doing a volume two. And um, I, I didn't know. I was like, yo, I did the first one, but I didn't, I didn't know that one. I knew that it was like a volume one, like they were going to try, like, I don't know, people like, do volume ones all the time and there's never a volume two so i got a, like, I got a couple under my belt bro i, know, I, so, I had the best intentions i swear <laughs> so i didn't know what what was going on you know but um uh we all got thrown into like this group chat and uh ruckus had reached out and was like yo uh we want to do this volume two thing um me and rich are gonna kind of um take the take the helm of this thing and kind of you know figure out who might be able to match up together stylistically or who we can blend together to to make something pretty dope um and uh rich had sent over uh the record 
uh, he has sent over to B, and uh, he has said this one is going to be for Khan. And I was like, oh snap, okay, cool, that's different. Mm-hmm. That's that's different. That's somebody and a different that bounce too. Completely, yeah, completely different bounce, completely different sound. Everything was 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 different about this record. Um, so um, for Khan, I'm like, okay, this is somebody that's. And he's got a he's got some history with different factions, different groups, different teams, but I still feel like he's a little underrated. So it was it was also a thing where Han, I, I don't I don't know if he's like really an introvert or whatever, but it's it you don't really know too much about Khan if you don't know exactly. too much about Khan. Exactly. So <laughs> you kinda gotta, you know, you kinda gotta tap in a little bit. Um so for for me. Uh, when I when I got the record and I got the beat, um, and he was like, "Yo, it's gonna be you, you and Cut on this record, and I, I need y'all to do something for Khan." And I'm like, oh, "Cool, that's that's that that's that's different. Um, that's different." So I, I got that, and I just for some reason, like I kept hearing this this little this little bounce, this little melody kind of with it. So I just kind of started playing around with that, and I hit Cut, and I was like, "Hey, um, I don't know if you had an idea." For this but i kind of want to give something a try you know it's not really typically my bag to be honest with you but right, i kind of right. want to give this a go right and he was like hey run it you know what i'm saying send me what you got and i'm a i'm a double back and we just gonna make it work and i was like all right bet um so i kind of got in the lab and i was playing around a little bit with the with the with the little cadence and the, all right okay and i was like i'm like i gotta do something with that you know what i'm saying i'm like okay and i i had that all right okay and i had the and this is part of the hook i had the all right okay and then i had the okay all right i knew i wanted to do that somehow some way right Mm -hmm. and then i just got to thinking about i'm like i could really just kind of put together just like a like a vibe you know like just kind of bring together like this whole little kind of like a crew love type of atmosphere thing like hotel kick it you know after party type 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 situation and that's kind of like what i was feeling visually and hearing visually um so i kind of went that route with it and so uh when i sent it to cut and he sent his joint back i was like i i I didn't i don't know how he came up with like all those different con on like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. schemes and all that i'm like bro i was you know you ever hear like a verse and you feel like man i wish i would have came up with that bar or whatever like 100 i'm like bro like this whole scheme like it's literally his name and it just went completely over my head and th- for him to attack it like that i was like bro this guy is special man like <laughs> <laughs> this guy is special you know what i'm saying so um it was it was a cool it was a cool thing i tried to do uh you know what it was i kept hearing um when i was listening to the beat i kept hearing um uh, what's the record what's the record ah, it's, 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 it's fucking me up right now the joint with uh drake and wayne but he's like, and we gonna be all right if we put Drake on every hook and it's like that. Oh, I know, that, yeah, that. I know what you're talking about. I, I, know you're talking I, about. I can't remember yeah, I can't right think now. Of the name either, but yeah, I yeah know exactly but it, what you're talking about. It's yeah. losing me, but that's I, I kept hearing like that kind of that gotcha. kind of feeling, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of wave. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna just play around and we're gonna do this. And uh, if if they if they rock with it, they rock with it. If they don't, you know, I'll I'll get cut off of volume two. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I miss I miss my wave, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but they rocked with it, you know what I'm saying? And they kept it, and it was it was cool. Like uh, I was a little apprehensive about it, but um, it came out dope, so it was cool. I, I appreciated the, once again to to be able to to be able to work with them. Um, hopefully, we get the volume three, and and we do something even crazier. Let's go! Everybody that that was a part of this was 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 dope. Everybody was that. Yeah, they all did their thing. Like the shut up and dribble was dope. Yep. I thought the uh the bad news and tattoos was fire. Um Victor Perry, man. That uh, was um club, like I'm like, oh my god. That was one of them. I think his his was number two. That was the uh the Willow Nightingale story, yeah, right? Yeah, the Willow yeah. joint, the babe with the power. Jeez. Yeah, Killed man. It. It, it it was it was just some dope stuff on there. Every, everything was fire. I was even the even, bro, like how you how you 
Who's doing who's doing songs for referees, bro? I was about to say the Stefan Smith joint, bro. <laughs> Come on, Stephon bro. Smith. Bro. That was one of my I'm like, yo, just the fact that there's a song for a ref and it's dope. Like yeah. props. Props. Nah, it was a it was a good project, man. Definitely congrats to everybody involved. So we got those projects. We got the public enemies uh pod. Like what else is 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 happening in in, in you know the world of Graham right now? What you got going on? Ollie League, Ollie Lee with Keeks, man. That's Ollie the homie Lee with Keeks. Public Enemies Podcast, AEW, Wrestling, you know what I'm saying? All the music projects. They think I'm hologram right now. I'm going to try to keep that joke going. Uh, nah, but uh, for me... Uh, Off the top I, rope, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I, you know what it is, bro? This, the, These uh, last two projects uh just working with aw and the response that those have gotten have kind of like motivated me in a different way so i'm like kind of toying with the idea of like actually like doing maybe like a couple little joints just to kind of you know like it's like a, the lyrical exercise idea you 100%. know what i'm saying just keep keep the pen in shape um you know um i did i, I think maybe like a year or so ago might have been t- might have been two years ago. I did like the the EO Sky uh, theme song freestyle or whatever, and that kind of you know people was fucking with that a little bit. But I did that like in promotion of the podcast, so it wasn't like anything else like that that was like powered for or behind mm-hmm. or there was no real significance um, for that. But um, I got some stuff, some ideas uh, that I kind of want to flush out a little bit. And I don't know. We'll see where it goes. But I like just like like just like when niggas do the volume ones. And I'm not I'm not going to make no promises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly why I didn't call No Flows Bar Part One a volume one or anything. Because I'm like, just in case it don't happen, like best of intentions, of course. But man, just do that shit for the love, man. Like wherever it happens to, you know, land on the business. Side. I always tell people it's like, you know, I'm an artist when I'm in that creative space, you know, yeah. and when I walk out of it, that's when that artist you got to put that to the side and take care you know whatever t's need to be crossed eyes dotted so on and so forth but just for passion purposes one of them things that just doesn't leave you know it doesn't leave you know i was doing it for so long and got a little bit you know did a little a a couple of things did more way more on the behind the scenes and djing tip but it's one of those things like a first love you know and and when you get kind of riding that bike it's just oh shit this this feels like i you know like yesterday kind of thing, you know? And again, yeah. like being somebody, I really do respect your pen. So I really do hope that that is something that you, uh, that you bring back to the forefront for sure. Hey, listen, uh, you know what I do? There is one other record that's, that's, uh, scheduled for release. I don't know when it's, when exactly it's going to be dropping, but I did do another verse, uh, for my guy rated R's next project. Um, so, and he just, he just actually, he just dropped a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the the arrogance, uh, the arrogance joint, the Ricky Martel uh, joint that he did, uh, maybe like yeah, just a couple of weeks ago. But so so I'm sure he's 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 gearing up pretty soon here. But uh, we did a record on on his next project, uh, and uh, that one's nice. It's uh, I, I don't really want to say too much, but it's it's a dope record, and it's it's one of the uh, it's in the in the vein of one of the. Uh, one of the biggest wrestling families that that you could uh kind of look to right now you know something like that fire that's out there that's out there yeah where well, that's fire, coming fire. rather that's coming but yeah hey man you you went crazy on keek's intro hold on bro like what what, what, are we, <laughs> what are we doing bro like i had no idea yeah. that that was even happening and it Ke- just, keeks keeks hit me she just you know yeah. hit me was like man i'm i'm trying to do x y and z you know are you down i was like absolutely i yeah, locked in you know the illest test my wife yeah. came in she was like yo i really fuck with this beat i was like all right we're good <laughs> <laughs> we're all the way good that's the one i'm using because i pulled works. two that up yeah too. i pulled yeah. two up i'm like i kind of know the vibe that i want to go in for keeks yeah. but my wife came in it's like nah that's that's, that's the nice, one right? i said say like, less let me right. pin this one i don't nah, need was... nobody else's opinion exactly like, let's go <laughs> exactly nah no, that was no, a good I... ass time man i love keeks you know keeks is... I, I appreciated that i appreciated yeah. that like like i said i didn't know that was happening and then like just one day like 
I remember her telling me that she had wanted to do uh, a new intro and she had something in mind or somebody in mm -hmm. mind or whatever, but that was maybe like a couple of months before. So I don't know if she was talking about the same thing that she was talking, right, right. Like, talking about what, what y'all ended up creating, or if she was talking about maybe just somebody like on an editing wave or whatever. But, um, when it, when it, when it, when it, when it, like I said, I had no idea about it. So when the episode was on, oh shit, you ain't know till it actually it was like on air. I didn't know till it happened, <laughs> till it happened, till it was there, until it was real, and That's it was fire. official. You feel me? And I'm like, oh, this is dope. Like, okay, <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. And then I'm like, hold on, she didn't come to me. She didn't come to. <laughs> she didn't come to bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm 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 not out here. I'm not outside. I'm not outside. We we outside, but I'm not outside. I was like, all right, man. Let me let me let me get outside then. You feel me? Let me fuck around. But yeah, no, nah, I I loved it, man, and I appreciate it. That shit was fire. Thank you, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah. Nah, shouts to Keeks, man. Again, like that's the homie. I I fuck with Keeks all day. She was one of the first people like outside when we first started moving Ringside Club a little bit. She was just like retweeting just off of the strength, like not really even knowing us and then started to reciprocate that with her, you know, with her show. I was already, I think I came across Public Enemies way back when like I came across Black Wrestling, y'all and Black Announce Table kind of around the same time. This is years ago. You know what that's I mean? So I was like, too. yeah, there you go. There you go. That's the, that's the triangle offense right there and all that. So. But yeah, man, this is, this has been dope, man. This has been episode, I believe, forty one of Part of My Fresh Radio. Once again, we are getting under the hat of the people that actually make the dope shit that makes the world go round. So, with that being said, Graham, uh, let everybody know on socials, website wise, where they could find you, what they should be tapping into. Ah oh, man, uh, everything Public Enemies podcast related. That's uh, P3 on Thursdays, uh, 7.15 p.m. Eastern, live and direct, coming from the trap. Uh, Ollie Lee with Keeks every Monday. That's uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, hey man, we got that going. There's the patreon.com slash public enemies. But if you want to tap in with me at Oh My God Graham everywhere like air, that's all I can say. Yes, sir. And you know me, man. Me, myself, Irene. I go by the name of A.O. Baker. Find me everywhere at I am A.O. Baker. Of course, part of my fresh.com. Stay tapped in over the next couple of, let's say, month, about a month, about a month, about a month, dropping some heat and all that. And we're back, uh, back outside with things like that. So, yeah, man. Part of my fresh.com. Part of my fresh radio. Episode 41. Sure, rap. Peace.